Okay, today we're going to work on some really basic concepts. So if you're going to begin a martial arts program, you're going to want to find a place to train. You're going to want to find a place to practice. So those two things need to be understood because the reality is much like any other art process that you may learn, martial arts study requires a diligent amount of time and energy spent towards perfecting those things that you see people doing that other people say can't be done. So that's the first thing is you have to clear off all of the potential objections that your body might have uh, towards things to make them natural, to make them feel right uh, until they begin to do so. And then you'll see that little bit of the light at the end of the tunnel on a journey that requires maybe close to 10 to 20 years. So if you're just getting started with this, remember, Take your time. Uh, I studied with one teacher for eight years straight before I began to branch off on my own. And then, you know, I've got 25 years behind me before turning this camera on. And I started in 1991. So as we begin to do today, we're going to focus on moving in a linear fashion, but then off angle, working around a circle. Mantis does a lot of things that you can apply to more orthodox fighting found in sporting environments today, both MMA and boxing can benefit from the fighting theories that came out of uh, the Shaolin Temple at this time due to this one fact, and that's that the theories themselves are the things that are applied to the principles and therefore the chain styles and all the other things. So it's, it kind of removes the style for a minute so that you can delve into the intricacies of things like footwork, range theory. So we're gonna work on that today. That's a very basic thing that comes from traditional Kung Fu. Now, most traditional Kung Fu systems that are taught today will have some of this uh, hidden. Most of the old Kung Fu masters didn't teach it. It certainly wasn't pressure tested very much. And quite frankly, most of the internet is flavored up with crap today from, from the Kung Fu world. But we're gonna focus on how to apply this in a much more modern sense, and I'll tell you why as we go. So first, in order for a person to strike, and, and what I've done here is I've created an area in my room such that I know very clearly where that distance that I'm gonna to need to cover is. And what I mean by that is, in practice, you'll see people using a double end bag, such as the one that I have here, where it's a single bag, very typically, and then what they're doing is they're using it to practice a series of punches that maybe they've been taught. So like a one, two, three is a really basic thing. So, you know, you're gonna do one, two, three, you know, or one, two, three, you know. There's a whole bunch of different combinations, and I don't know them, so that was incorrect, one, two, three. So it doesn't matter. The point is, is that when you're standing, two, three, one, two, three, and you're moving, this is gonna move with you. If you think for one minute that a guy my size, so I'm five, seven and a half today, probably reached five, eight and a half when I was a kid. So if you think that this guy's gonna let me just walk in and punch him in the face, you're out of your mind, man. He has a 72 inch reach. Oh crap, he's like tall. Most guys in my range are tall. When I say range, I mean body weight. I'm short. Anyway, when you move forward, you're going to have to move your head. You're going to have to move your body as well so you don't walk into stuff. And additionally, you're going to have to do that because not only is he going to try to hit you, if he doesn't, he's probably going to move. So that's where you're going to learn to move one, two, and you're going to move back out. So Mantis footwork is very similar to boxing in that it designed itself around the art of staying right next to an opponent while delivering strikes with likely some type of bladed instrument. And that's what you guys don't realize from the Kung Fu world. So in boxing, however, you don't get that option. So on the double end bag, when you're standing there practicing all these things, remember, back out to that level where it's more realistic for you. See, that's what I've done for me. Most guys know I'm easy to kick in the head. They're hard as hell to take down because I'm fast and I'm short. 
So that's my advantage. I'm clean on the inside. And the reason why is because where I had to be. I could kick a guy in the head, but that wasn't my strong point. So, when you get to close the gap with footwork, you must do it quickly. Footsteps have to be very quick, very vivid, bam, and back, such that you don't lose your balance if it's slippery, so you don't put all this weight and go whoop, and oh man, can you see the knockout coming from this? I do. So, when you move forward, you gotta keep your weight centered, such that you can move quickly. When you move back, it's the same way. Now, the way you move back might be different. The footwork I'm using, or that I'll teach, is called a stolen step, but it's very similar to others. Or, it's exactly like others, but called a different name. That's very common. Okay, so, when you're moving with Mantis, the first thing you have to remember is heel to toe, heel to toe. So this is the first footwork exercise that you will learn one, two, and back. And again, I'll do it this way. So one, two, and back. I'll do it with right foot forward. One, two, and back. Left foot forward. Two, back. One, two, and back. So now I have a drill that I can use where I can use these one, two, back movements as I go around the circle. So now I can go one, two, and back. So using simple footwork patterns and hitting areas that are known to me to be areas that I want to hit. So if you look on this bag, it's designed for a guy relatively my size. So when I'm hitting and moving, those strikes are all in areas that I want them to be. So again, first step, left foot forward. As you step, heel to toe. One, two, three. Stolen step back. Right foot forward. One, two, three. Loads up. Stolen step back. One, two, three. Loads up. Stolen step back. You see how that works? So it goes pop, pop, pop. Stolen step back. A little tap, tap foot works okay too. Little hop hop footwork is okay. However, you get out is okay. What's not okay is to walk out without doing something. So as you move in, bing bing bing, you don't just get to go. Oh, excuse me, sir. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave because that guy's gonna clip you right behind the ear. Oh, on the way out the door, <laughs> and you're gonna go nighty night. Okay, so you have to do something. So as you move in, you see that boom and out. So he may be throwing a blow, but right now I'm covered on this side, this hand's up, and I'm out. And I might be jabbing on the way out, but I'm out. So that footwork allows me to do all these things and back. So Mantis footwork, again, is a linear heel to toe step. What I'm doing to escape is called a stolen step. So the that's where the footwork sort of like shifts, but quickly to take the stance from behind or from in front. Because sometimes you move forward with a stolen step, sometimes you move back. It's a quick step. It allows you to really load up. And then the footwork that you see me using, when you go off angle, so it's interesting because the Manus guys all do these things that they have no idea how to apply. I've watched their videos, they're terrible, terrible. Watch them. Even my own students are like, uh, kind of iffy on some of these, right? The reality is it's hard. You have to study this, to practice this. So the off angle stuff with the mana stance is brilliant though, because it allows you to take the hip through with your punch, which is kind of what you do anyway, isn't it? I mean, hey, look, I don't know about you, but I was taught to move my body with my punches like any good guy should, right? So moving an off angle, when I mean off angle, look at when I move my feet to this position. I'm sinking down and I'm turning my foot in. So it allows me 
to line my stance such that I'm strong enough that if I get pressure, I can move back with either foot with balance. This has power, so it's stopping power. So those things are all good. And then once I strike with one, I can come back with two. I can come back with this way too and move out. There's any number of different things that could come from that. So again, now you have Manus step, okay, from a basic stance into a dodging footwork. So moving to the side using a Mantis footwork stance. And you've got one, two, three movements with retreat. So again, one, two, three. Remember rule of three. If you're studying with me, rule of three is important. Punches the bunches. The work, the whole nine yards. From the timing to the, to the way that chain styles work, from the psychology to the memory, all of it. So, footwork patterns. Remember them. And then forget them so that you can move freely. Okay? All you have to do is practice enough so that you can begin to move around the circle quickly and strike in and out of a range such that a boxer would. And once you get to that point where you can work them back, back out on your daily process of training. Okay, you don't have to use a lot of, of like heavy bag movements. If you're just trying to learn to be fast and powerful, you don't, you need feedback. So this is what you want to use, this double end bag, your custom one like mine. <laughs> And then, of course, they've you know, got any number of different types of bags that you really can use. What I'm doing, simply, is putting it in a way such that I can move around my bag and I don't get to stand and attack like it's free. So there you go, traditional Kung Fu around, this is more traditional Kung Fu than you might think, but a modern flavor. There we go. Manus Chronicles, E2.